And now, I don't mind a bit of a breeze. If anything, I prefer it. But Don was aggressive. So I says to himself, says I, Colm, this is no day for a do. What's happening? For when the bride arrived, and as I say, by this stage, the wind was fierce. My dad. I've never heard wind like it. Is this my week? Howling like a banshee it was. Am I in hell? So the poor girl, the bride now this is. She arrives anyway, and isn't she no sooner out of the car than she's lifted up in the air like a pepper doll and blown into a flower bed. That's actually quite funny. I don't understand this. You hate the cinema. Oh, not since I discovered it's the only way I can spend time with our column. It's the one place the boring bastard doesn't talk. But Colm's not here, is he, Da? Da? And that's not to say now that in my younger years I didn't enjoy a uh, boiled sweet. But then I heard tell of a fella from Ballina Hinch. What was it his name was now? I had it there a minute ago. Ah, it'll come to me. Anyway, this Ballina Hinch lad, and as I say, his name escapes me, but he was mad keen on the boiled sweets. Sure, he couldn't get enough of them, but in the end, well, didn't he choke to death on one? A hair drop, I think it was. Or a clove rock, maybe, but either way, it's not how I'd want to go. I know, love. I know. Look, lads, if you want my opinion... I don't! Stand. This Clinton boyo is actually America's 42nd president, which is interesting now, because JFK, well, he was the 35th. Why is that interesting? Well, it's not really, I suppose. Sometimes I'll just say someone to get me from one sentence to the other, Joe. I'm not sure what number Nixon was now. Or your man, what do you call him, the beardy fella in the hat? The one that knocked the out of slavery on the head? Lincoln. The very boy. But then there was the 27th, uh, America's 30th. And then there was the lad they named all the vacuum cleaners after. Jesus wept. How much further, Jim? It should be just up here on the left. We're back in the same place. And Kennedy, of course, the poor crater. How? Lovely fella. Hands on him like shovels. How the f are we back in the same f place? What's going on? I've driven 178 miles and I'm back where I was five f hours ago, Joe. That's what's going on. You stupid bloody agent. Don Reagan character, he was another. Stop listing presidents, Colin! As far as sausage rolls go, well, I could take them or leave them. But that's not to say I don't appreciate the work that goes into them. Look, Colin, no offence, but I listened to the prawn cocktail monologue. I'm not getting into sausage rolls. There was a fella that lived on my street and, well, he was a pastry chef. He's dead now. This was when he was alive. And when he came over for a bloody knock. I'm sorry, um, I can't actually believe that I'm about to say this, but can I speak to him on my own for a moment? Thank you, son. Thank you. Colin, I've been thinking about this business with Eamon's roof. Desperate altogether. Ah, sure, there's nothing worse. I remember okay. one. I'm going to play a game. You can only speak if you're holding this. Fair enough, Jerry. Must get a bit lonely for you rattling around that big house on your own. I live in a two bedroom terrace, Jerry. Oh, sorry. I live in a two-bedroom... Two bedrooms is still one bedroom too many. But what if Eamon came and stayed with you for a bit? I don't know, Jerry. Why not? I'm sure you'd be company for each other. The thing is... Now, how do I put this? I'm trying to find the right word. What? You don't have the breadstick, Jerry. Fuck the breadstick. What is it? Well, I find Eamon a bit... born, to be honest. I see. It's Uncle Colin. Well, I'm not taking it. I've been sung once already this week. And aren't 45 minutes talking about his new shoelaces? I'm sure I've stopped answering my phone altogether for fear it's him, Mary. Will you take it, Dad? No chance, love. I mean, I know I shouldn't say this about my own brother, but by Christ, he's a boring bastard. Well, is somebody going to take it or not? Don't give a cheeky. This is the cheek, you. How's it going, Colin? Would you ever think of going cordless? I was brave and cold earlier, that's true. Jenna Sharkey went cordless and she's like a new woman now, Jerry. No, it's not as cold now. She can make a call from her living room, from her kitchen, 
from her bedroom. Right, look, Colm, I don't have long. We're sitting to the chippy here. And the other night, right, and this is no word of a lie, she rang me from the bath. These cordless phones of the future. What? Oh, my God. What's wrong? Our Colm's in the police station. Last night, two gunmen forced their way into his house, tied him up, stole his van. Dirty bastards. Oh, God, love you, you poor critter. You ought to come straight round here, do you hear me? There was a knock at the door. This must have been, ah, we're talking eight, half eight, for I was halfway through me dinner. And up I got to open it, and there they both were, large as life. And the taller fella, though to be fair, there was no more than an inch in it. Jesus wept. The slightly taller fella, he says to me, says he, do you know who we are? How's a buddy supposed to enjoy his dinner? And I says to him, says I, well, I can't be sure now, but maybe if you took off the balaclavas. And then he says to me, the slightly taller fella does, he says, step aside, we are armed. Class. And that's when the smaller fella, although, as I say, we're talking an inch. Stop. An inch and a half at most. I need a drink. He has the bright idea of tying me to the radiator, you see. And I remember saying to myself, says I, call him. It's a good job you have the Economy 7 on the old timer, or you'd be roasted here. Did you go for the Economy 7 in the end column? I thought you says the hot water sentence were mine feet. For the love of God, there are no diversions, please. Aye, come on, let's pack it up. The tide did the heater. They did indeed. And there I am, shackled to the thermostatic valve with my new shoelaces, when one of them, the smaller fella, or hang on, maybe it was the... Doesn't matter, Colm. Well, it was one of the two. He's looking for the keys to the van. Oh, ranting and raving and getting himself all worked up, threatening to set fire to me good shares long and all sorts. By Jesus, they were absolutely desperate to borrow the own van. Call them they didn't borrow your van. They stole your van, used it to move arms across the border, and then they blew it up. Aye, nightmare altogether. Ah, oh, well, I'm delighted for you, Call them. What? Well, I just mean that, well, before he had nothing really going for him, but now... Well, now he is somebody, now he's the fella that got tied to his own radiator. Thanks, Sarah. Oh, shit. There you are. These spiders. Run, girls, save yourselves. John over there was just saying, you know John, lovely fella, married to uh, Patricia, I think it is, and her mother worked in the credit union, you might remember, absolutely crippled with the old gallstones, so she was. Christ almighty. And the gallstones, well, now, they're no joke. Never mind Dickie Donegan. By God, he was tortured with the gallstones, the size of golf balls they were. And um, what did John say, Colin? For the love of God, what did he say? He was telling me there, John was, that every being in the place is talking about Sarah's frog. Oh, really? Jesus, but this is an ordeal. Well, at least I got a good day for it, Mary. I'll tell you, I was at one there up in the cathedral last week. By God, the wind could have cut you in two. Fierce it was. And now, I don't mind uh, a bit of a breeze. If anything, I prefer it. But Dawn was aggressive. And I says to myself, says I, call him. This is no day for a do. And as it turns out... Can I just stop you there, Colin? Surely, Mary, go ahead. Oh, no, nothing to say. I just really, really need you to stop talking. Fair enough. So I says to myself, says I, call him. Who'd be ringing you at this hour? And sure, if I hadn't been in the middle of a may have been she, I'd have probably slept through the thing altogether. Or wasn't we asked him? I can't remember, sir. Jesus. I'm like a dead one. Mr. McCool, if I could just... You, your nieces and their friends claim they saw the men who carried out this burglary. We did see them. They've given us some rather vague descriptions. Hardly vague. I apologise, Miss Mallon. You did provide us with quite specific details of the suspect's rear end. Apology accepted. We also gave you a name? Nobody in Londonderry is called Hans, girls. Well, you say that now, but there's a young lad up in Pennyburn uh, called Diego. Is this relevant? The mother, she's a dairy woman, but the father, he was Spanish, though not on the scene, by all accounts. Thank you. If we could just... Alex, don't leave me. According to the it's mother, he, himself, sir. Uh, Diego's father, this is. Well, he came over with the Spanish Armada, then cleared off, leaving her to raise the wane on her own. But that story didn't totally add up. 
What's the thing? I need you to stop talking, man. The problem being that the Spanish Armada landed here in 1588 and that the son, uh, Diego, as you call him, well, he was born more than four centuries later. I will caution you. She made the whole thing up. As mad as a bag of cats she was. Sir. And she had been clattering the way in, in non-fake tan stuff to make him more Spanishy looking, you know. There's a van matching the descriptions on CCTV. Which is how suspicions were raised, you see, because there was a powerful whiff off the wee crater. That'll do. Thank you very much for your time. You've been a huge help. We'll take it from here. We can go. Yes, please. Do go right now. And for the love of suffering Jesus, take him with you. Thank you. You have a legend, God. A legend. Thank you, God. Any time, Wayne. Any time at all. Okay. Try this, man.